Hey everyone, welcome back to the Quick Shifts channel. My name is Jason and today we're going to talk about the five most common complaints or questions that we see on Facebook groups for the Grand Wagoneer, the Wagoneer series one, two, and three. And we're going to discuss those a little bit and see if we can give you guys some more information on what those are and why they're caused. All right guys, this is our series one Wagoneer carbide edition again. And uh, we're going to talk about some of these things that we see on the Facebook groups that are commonly mentioned or talked about. So first off, the number one thing that I see out there that people are asking about is the second row cooling. So let's take a look at that real quick. So in the second row, you have cooling vents here and under the seats. And even in the third row, let's see if I can get a picture of it. The vents are over here on this side. You can see where those come in. Now what a lot of people don't know is that you do have your traditional AC system under the hood. And so you have a unit under here and then there's also piping that goes down underneath and there's a second unit back in this section of the car. And I'll put a picture up here in the corner, you guys can see that a little bit better, that pumps in and does additional cooling here that feeds these vents in the back of the, of the wagon air. And uh, thus far, it has not been an issue for us in our wagon air. Most of the complaints that we see actually tie back to the Grand Wagon Air for that kind of complaint or the first edition of the Series 2 and Series 3. That's where we're seeing most of those comments made. But for ours, ours is a second edition being the carbide package and the build and we have not had a problem with that. That brings us to the second thing that we see on the Facebook groups of common complaints and that's actually back here in the tailgate. So let's go ahead and open this up. takes a second and uh, we'll flip around and show you guys what we're talking about. It's actually here on these seats and people are complaining that the leather along the top here is pulling away from the uh, backing. All right, so let's take a little bit of a closer look. Go ahead and drop this down for now. But if you guys look at these seams, apparently the leather is pulling away from these seams and that seems to be a common issue that people are having. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep an eye on this on our particular vehicle, and we'll make sure that in future videos when we follow up, we'll, we'll take a look and see if we see any of that happening. But thus far, and if you look at the second row seats, it's a similar way, thus far we have no issues, but right now we're only sitting at about 600 miles on this vehicle. The third most common complaint that we're seeing on, on the Facebook groups is the sound of the Hemi engine. And this one, I gotta be honest guys, this one blows my mind because I love this sound. But a lot of people are saying it's too loud. Ah, oh, it's beautiful, it's music to my ears. I don't know how people are complaining about this. I think it sounds great. But a lot of people say it's too loud, it should be quieter, should not be that intrusive. Let's go ahead and sit inside of it and start it up. And let's go ahead and hit the start button and see how loud it is from the inside. Sorry for the ch chimes, but you can tell it's very, very quiet in here. It's nowhere near as loud as it is when you're standing outside of the vehicle. It's very quiet. It's exactly what you would want. I'm not sure I understand people's complaint. I mean, if you want a silent vehicle, don't buy a large vehicle. It takes a lot of power. It takes a V8, really, to pull a vehicle of this size and this weight. So, uh, I, I'm sorry guys, I don't follow that one. Uh, even from the outside, I love the sound of, of the cold start. The next complaint is this sidestep. So, on our vehicle, we have a solid fixed side step. So I can't really weigh in on this one, but on the Grand Wagoneers and some of the other models of the regular Wagoneers, Series 2, Series 3, and uh, maybe even on Series 1, I'd have to double check that one, but you can get the electronic step that comes out when you open the doors. And that's been a big complaint for people. A lot of them have been failing. They have to go in and get them warranted and get replacements. 
And of course, like everything else right now, it's on back order. So uh, I feel like I'm lucky here with the black solid fixed state. Don't have to worry about the actuators failing or any of that. And the fifth or final item, go ahead and start this back up, is check engine codes here on the dash. So apparently in the first run, the Grand Wagoneers, Series 2 and Series 3 Wagoneers that were released first, they're getting a lot of issues in check engine codes and such on the dash. And uh, from my research on this, it sounds like most of these are due to uh, software updates. So if you take your vehicle in and have the service center do the software updates, it seems to clear a lot of that. But I can certainly understand the frustration that some people are having. Obviously, uh, some of these check engine lights apparently put the vehicle into limp mode and you lose all your power and it renders the car difficult to drive around. And when you're paying $100,000 for a vehicle in some cases and more, uh, that would <laughs> That would definitely frustrate me. Well, guys, thanks for tuning in again for another episode of Quick Shifts with me. I uh, really appreciate you guys watching. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. If you want further details on these, go ahead and uh, comment down below, and we'll answer those comments. And if there's something you want to see more, more detail in another video on, let us know. But that's the five top complaints that we've seen on the Facebook groups. Uh, I hope this information was helpful for you. Uh, and again, thanks for watching. We appreciate all of your support. Thank you.